Good morning, everyone. My name, as introduced, is Dr. Saliha Dick, and I'm the Asthma Program Manager at the Bureau of Bronx Neighborhood Health, which is part of the New York City Department of Health. On behalf of our Bureau, I'd like to express my deepest thanks to the organizers for the invitation, because today we're going to be having a very important conversation. And this moment presents us with a precious opportunity, a unique opportunity for us here in the Bronx to shine a light on our beautiful borough as a means of mobilizing both the energy and the resources that are required for spurring much needed change. The Bronx is blessed with stunning landscapes. About one quarter of its land area is open space, and it is home to the New York Botanical Gardens and the Bronx Zoo, among many other gems. The Bronx has a population of about 1.5 million residents, which is about 17% of the New York City's population, and 86% of our residents are Latino and Black, with only 9% of our population being of the white uh, ethnicity um, racial description, we find that policies that tend to benefit whites don't generally benefit the Bronx. We speak over 90 languages here, and more than one third of us are foreign born. So despite its many strengths, the Bronx is home to stark inequities which stem from centuries of systems and policies that are rooted in racism. In the nearly 400 years of American history since the start of slavery, civil rights were only gained within the last 60 to 70 um, years. And these rights are still being challenged and threatened today. One example of this is systemic racism where the, the policy of redlining, which was a government policy that codified racism by outlining areas on maps from green to blue to yellow and red in order to indicate the level of security for real estate investment, we find that certain neighborhoods were definitely elevated um, at the expense of others. The type A neighborhoods, which are outlined in green, see here. So the type A neighborhoods outlined in green, then going to the blue, yellow, and red. So as we progress from green through red, we have different levels of investment um, by mortgage in, in, uh, investors, real estate investors. So the type A neighborhoods were outlined and they represented the affluent suburbs, the more desirable areas, whereas the type D neighborhoods outlined in red were considered to be the most risky for mortgage support. Neighborhoods were effectively segregated by race, and this policy resulted in enduring and current systemic and deeply institutionalized disinvestment in communities of color. So one tangible Example of this is the Cross Bronx Expressway highway system. Constructed from 1948 to 1972, it was the first highway in the United States to be built through a city. It cut a seven mile physical and metaphorical wound through the Bronx, leveling homes and businesses and displacing more than 1,500 families while most white families were able to flee to the suburbs by purchasing homes that were supported by government-backed mortgages, the poor families of color remained and the process of urban decay began. The economy of the South Bronx suffered immensely. And in many ways, the Bronx has not yet recovered from this devastation and the ensuing decades of trauma. In terms of our health outcomes, the Bronx is currently ranked last in the state of New York, 62 out of 62 counties. And it's been holding this position since the rankings were first released in 2010. When we examine poverty, poverty and premature mortality on the right, as a function of New York City neighborhoods, these two maps highlight the fact that the neighborhoods with the highest rates of premature mortality shown in the darkest colors 
The darkest colors of the map are also the neighborhoods with the highest percentage of residents living in poverty. And this point is further illustrated here, where we see the Bronx had very high rates of both COVID-19 cases, seen on the left, and deaths on the right. And if we try to examine why exactly this happened, like what was the cause of this? Well, first, the Bronx is known for its overcrowded and poor quality housing, number one. Secondly, there is a very high prevalence of essential workers. And like many in the room, doctors, nurses who are essential workers, they didn't have the option of staying home during the pandemic. This high burden of cases then resulted in a higher burden of deaths in addition to the fact that or higher rates of underlying chronic diseases um, exist here in the Bronx. And we also have very high multi-generational households, which made it very difficult for um, families to, to socially distance and families to quarantine those who were elderly and potentially more vulnerable from other members of the household. And so just infections were higher, cases were higher, deaths were higher. The Department of Health is working to undo these injustices and eliminate these inequities by investing in key neighborhoods across the city. And we have the Bronx highlighted in blue, Harlem in red, and Brooklyn in green. Since 2003, the Bronx Neighborhood Health Action Center has worked to promote health equity and reduce health disparities in the Bronx through a variety of programs and activities focused on both prioritizing and facilitating the health and wellness of its residents. We conduct original research to identify community needs and elevate community voices in decision-making processes. We also offer direct programs and services to our residents in the form of our family wellness program that includes a family wellness suite, our pack and play and car seat distribution, along with pregnancy, childbirth, and newborn care classes. We offer health and wellness education in the form of diabetes self-management education and support, as well as COVID-19 information and resources for testing, vaccination, and treatment. We also offer free pest control services for children with asthma living here in the Bronx. And our mission is just to exemplify that of public health in action meeting our residents where they are. As you see in these photos, we're out in the community, you know, meeting our people on the ground, dis disseminating our services. And one really key point that I wanted to highlight was this picture, which shows us conducting COVID-19 testing, contact tracing in a, ch a local church in order to facilitate the needs of the undocumented who were wary of participating in, in the more traditional um, resources that were available. And so this is the goal of public health, connecting with people where they are in order to disseminate the services that are needed, right? And given the scale and depth of the problems, it may seem like we have a Herculean task ahead of us, but it's through conversations like these that we're having today that are followed up with consistent, concrete, and strategic action that will begin to move the needle and make a difference in the health outcomes here in the Bronx and across the city. I thank you.